Hey there, Becky here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can use an image for the background of the footer in your Brian Squarespace website. Now, super important before we get into any of the code here, this tutorial is specific for Brian theme templates. That's because the name of the footer, the code name that we're gonna use, is very unique for that particular type of website. Now, if you have no idea what I mean by that, check out the link in the description below. I wrote up a little article about what version, theme, and template you're using, so you can use that information to make sure you're using a Brian website. But if you know you're on Brine, you're in the right place, let's get started with this tutorial. I'm gonna break down for you exactly how this is gonna work. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna upload an image to our custom files. I wanna make sure this image is hosted on your website so that you control the URL, so that way it can't change later in life. It'll be on your website along with all your other content and that URL will be exactly what you need for your code. Now the second part of the code I'm gonna show you is how to isolate just the top middle or bottom footer of your Brian website. That's right, we can isolate each one individually. So you can either have one code that covers the whole thing, so that image will be on all three versions of your footer, or you can isolate just the top, just the middle, or just the bottom, all right? Awesome. Now the codes I'm using today are listed in the description beneath the video, but I'd love to show you how they work so you understand exactly what part you need to change to make it look great on your own website. So let's hop into my demo site and get started today. Here we are in my demo site and you'll see I have a top blocks with some social links, a middle blocks with a little menu there, and then some bottom blocks with just some filler text. We're gonna do a particular type of code that will cover all three of those and then we're gonna isolate each one individually, okay? But first, we need to head to our custom CSS section to upload that image. So I'm gonna navigate to design and then scroll down to custom CSS at the bottom. Now at the very bottom here, you're gonna see a button that says manage custom files. It's very important. If I click on that, I can either select this arrow right here to open up my file explorer on my computer, or if you already have the file handy like I do, just drag and drop it right there into the custom files section of your website. That is where this image is going to be hosted so we can grab the URL it's generated to put that into our code, okay? So speaking of the code, I'm gonna paste the first code that's in the description beneath my video and just paste it right here. Now you'll notice in the very first line, it says your URL here in between single quotation marks. Leave the quotation marks. Just remove the text, but make sure you have those single quotation marks around where we're gonna place this URL. Now I've removed the text, I'm gonna open up my custom files again and just click on that image. And Squarespace will put the entire URL into my code for me. How cool is that? And check it out, we have this sweet Lego background. Um, I don't know if you've heard this on another video, but I'm actually a huge, huge Lego nerd. I used to do Lego competitions when I was a kid. Yeah, it's a thing, I'm awesome. Anyway, so what this code is doing is it's covering the entire footer, all three sections. Now the next part here of this code says background repeat, no repeat. And then it says background size cover. What that means is I'm telling the browser to use that image to cover the whole thing, top to bottom, left to right, don't repeat my background. If you have a much smaller pattern, let's say one that's only like 100 pixels in width, you can actually change that no repeat so it'll repeat itself all the way across, vertically or horizontally. You've got a few options there and I've listed them in the description beneath the video. So let's just pretend you got the whole image like I do and that's what you wanna use but you wanna isolate just the top block or just the middle or just the bottom. This is how we're gonna do that. We're just gonna change this very beginning part where it says footer. I'm going to add dash blocks dash dash top. And check it out, just the top block is covered. However, you're gonna notice my site padding has left space on the left and the right. That's not cool. I want it to go across the whole screen, right? So we're gonna add a little bit more code right now. I'm actually gonna say width 120%, and that's gonna pull it all the way to the right, but then I'm gonna add margin left 10%. Oops, negative 10%. There we go. I'm gonna spell it correctly too. That's the problem. <laughs> all right, margin left negative 10%. There we go. Now it's stretched all the way to the left and all the way to the right. So feel free to adjust these percentages so it fits your own site padding. I think that's a really important thing to mention. If your site padding is not nearly as wide as mine was, you might only need 110% with a margin left of negative five, 
whatever you've got to do there to scoot it all the way back over so it covers the whole thing. Now, let's say you like the top, but you want the middle block to have this background image, just change the word top to middle, and there you go. Or let's say you want the bottom to have that, change the word top to bottom, and now just the bottom block is gonna get that image all the way across. But if you want it across the whole footer, you can remove that part, and you can remove that whole width margin fun stuff there because it's gonna cover the whole thing anyway. Now again, the codes that I used are in the description beneath the video. Um, there's the code for the entire footer, there's the code for the top, the middle, and the bottom, and definitely adjust those percentages to make sure that it actually suits the size of your website. So that's gonna change depending upon your site padding, so play around with those numbers. I recommend using percentages because that'll keep it responsive just like the rest of your website, okay? Awesome. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I try to hop in there as often as possible to help you guys out. And uh, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you like this tutorial, you'll love my CSS cheat sheet. With over 30 pages of pro tips and code snippets specific for Squarespace, you can customize your site way beyond your design menu. Download your copy today at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.